motion to approve the agenda. I'll right. second it. Have we, uh, are we live on? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I'll second that. Uh, all right, so we have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Discussion. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Those we'll opposed, abstentions. Uh, agenda is approved. Comments from the chair, chair Florida. No, the chair is second. <laughs> Vice chair from Florida. So I will shuffle us through this meeting. We have Aaron Kaziki um, joining us momentarily in person for the first in person planning commission in over three years now. Is that right? It was wild. Yeah, I think March March twenty twenty would have been the last last live meeting. I think I didn't make the last planning meeting in person in May, but I did watch it on uh, um yeah. Just talking about. Oh, there's a COVID case in Bennington. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was like that weird time when none of us wore masks, but we washed our hands and right. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wiped our mail. Yeah. Um, general business comments from the public about something not on the agenda. Any members of the public? Yeah, unless we're bringing Azalea back. It's probably best we don't. <laughs> Which then brings us to review of our community service implementation strategy chapter is on our Google Drive. Yep. I don't know if you want to pull that I can up. pull that up. Share screen. Let me. Through yeah. in community services. That one. That is up there. So, um, I mean, I guess I'll just kick off the community services. This is going to be a little bit more of a challenging. You've you've been through one of these with the public safety chapter where we had a lot of um, different subsections that we kind of had to work through and community services is going to be the same. So our community services um, has our, as departments, we have the parks department, the recreation department, senior center and cemetery. Cemetery is technically not part of community services. They're, they're separate, but we consider them in spirit part of the community services. Um, and then we also have a, a couple of other pieces that are also we have in uh, community services. Uh, our work we do around homelessness, um, while housing and making sure we have housing and perhaps a homeless shelter may fall into housing, a lot of what we do um, to provide assistance to the homeless community is more uh, a service than it is um, housing. Um, so we have homelessness in here as well as uh, conflict assistance, which is uh, some services that are provided out of the community justice center and child care, which is a required discussion point, but also the city of Montpelier provides uh, child care through the recreation department. So we have it broken out as well. In here, so we have draft uh, aspirations um, and draft goals for some of them and we only have strategies for the first four so as we kind of start working our way through we're going to end up with a little bit less a little bit less but i still have to do homelessness conflict assistance and child care but we thought we would take this opportunity to be able to go through some of the discussion points for the first four <laughs> save the easier ones yeah um so I guess by way of introduction, well, I guess everybody has been through 
this before. So we kind of have an understanding of the aspirations are our, our big uh, piece. Then we break that down into smaller goals and then eventually to uh, into the actual action steps that are strategy. So if we have, um, you know, an aspiration of having safe and affordable housing, uh, we would then have a goal for safe housing and a goal for affordable housing because the strategies to make housing safe are different than the strategies we would have to make housing affordable. And then we would get into what are the strategies for each one. So that's why we kind of break it into these three pieces. Um, and then um, we have these for each each piece. So parks, if you'll notice, parks with A. So we have proposed three for parks, three for three goals, four goals for recreation, uh, a number of goals for the senior center. And then we have some goals down here for cemetery. And this is the start of homelessness down here. And then just as we move into, we would, these are what we've seen before the for the strategies, um, recreation strategies and some senior center strategies and then some cemetery strategies. So with that quick introduction, uh, I don't know how we want to jump in. If we want to start, if we want to take parks first, or if we want to talk about all the aspirations first, or how we want to kind of move forward with a quick review. Uh, very quick question. Print about two versions of the strategies. One is dated July 24th, 2020, and March 2nd. So you'll need to use your microphone just that way. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Just so people can hear you online. I have two versions of this that I printed off. One's March 2nd, 2021. The other one is July 24th, 2020. What's Is there a more recent one? Or are we working off the 2021 version? Whatever is on the drive. So so. Both of them are on the drive. Aha. Uh -huh. Then it would be whatever is the more recent. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. And Mike, could you talk about the source? Uh, where he's, uh, from. Yep. So the parks, parks was actually done a while ago. I did parks at the same time that I did the natural resources. So parks was done in collaboration with the parks uh, department and the parks committee, commission, parks commission. So we worked with the parks commission to develop these and then we, um, the staff goes through and kind of finesses it to make it make sure it fits all the formats, and then we get it ready for you guys to go through and kind of make the, the, the review. Recreation was with the recreation director. I don't believe I met the recreation committee. I believe he had some conversations with the recreation committee. Senior center, I worked with um, the director of the senior center and she was already working on a strategic plan. So a lot of this kind of came out of the planning that she was already doing. And then the cemetery, I did meet with the cemetery director and the cemetery committee um, on their, their ideas. Uh, so a lot of these have come out of the various committees um, and, and their work. And these three were done last summer. I did have a comment on the parks. Um, I just wondered, there were in several of the sections, there were um, aspirations and goals and strategies around tourism. And to me, that doesn't belong in community services. I wonder if that's already covered sufficiently in economic development. I don't know. It just didn't seem to fit was my uh, reaction. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly um, something we can look at to to make word changes if we want to. Uh, the destination. Oh, 
you're looking for the the pat the so it's in city hall open yeah and then it is yeah it is all lowercase city hall nine nine one nine exclamation because they couldn't make it need something easy So yeah, it, it it's um, a part of I think for them the economic development piece is some somewhat trying to explain a little bit of what they do in their strategies. So they're looking at rather than just having uh, say say the uh, you're referring more to the parks than the recreation. Um, it's more how they do their their events and those types of things. They're going to set up a system that's going to work more regionally. Um, and whether that should fall more in economic development, it's certainly mentioned in economic development. It feels like an, an awkward category, Jim. When we when we went through parks the first time, was it was it under the header of community services? It it was because I think yeah I think you guys have reviewed parks before we just never got around to doing some final approving on it or maybe maybe we had some um, early approving on it. Um, if we did, I'm trying to remember back. It's been a while since we since I did parks. As I said, I did parks and natural resources at the same time, and that may have been back almost two years ago now. Because it. It feels like some of our community services, or what we might consider community services, aren't in here. And then there are things in here that are not community services that we're providing. They're, they seem like laudable aspirations or goals, but I'm not sure that they're, um, they're community services. Like, you know, ch child care, for example. Don't know that that's going to be become a community service. We should certainly do everything we can to you know, improve the child care situation. But I don't know that it's to me this implies that the this is a service like that the city will be providing to its residents, right? Yes, but in I mean in the case of child care, the city actually is a licensed child care provider. So our after school programs uh, that the recreation department provides is um, technically child care. We also have the summer programs that we provide. Um, there's a bunch of summer summer programs that are also provided. Um, and then there is a goal of the recreation department to also start to find uh a way of providing um, infant or young child care. Um, and so that is a goal that that they do have. It's part of the plan for Country Club Road site. Um, it's been a goal for a while for them to try to to fill that gap because the you know the there just isn't enough. And so if we're gonna have if we're gonna try to get more child care provided, then it might have to be some of it might have to be a public publicly provided community service. Um, it's not for free. I mean, it, we may call it a community service, but it's not for free. There are fees involved. And is, are we doing conflict assistance? We do actually have conflict assistance. We, we make a lot of those uh, referrals. Uh, they either will come out of the police from police encounters. They also come a lot out of the planning department. We'll have a lot of um, neighbor disputes that will come up during the um, permitting process. Some things that people want to bring to us to help resolve through a permitting issue is really not a permitting issue. And it's something that is more of a, of a civil issue between two neighbors. So we would advise them to go and try to work with the um, community justice and they provide mediation services. brain is just struggling to like box these things in because like our schools aren't in here and fire services aren't in here but some of these things are screen sweeping yeah <laughs>
Yeah, some of the some of the pieces, like you said, um, we we did kind of recouch the public safety to kind of talk about more of a public agency plan. I think we talked about it, and so both the facilities and the services that those those services provide are kind of wrapped up into there. Um, yeah, I mean, we could talk about public transit. Is that a is that a service? Is that you know we've got to put them somewhere. Um, so it could be. Public transportation could be in a community service. It could be in transportation. It could be in energy um, as a way of saving energy. And I believe it's in transportation. It's where we've couched public transportation. Um, these tend to be, we, we have in the city a community services department, which includes the first, as I said, the first three parks, um, MSAC and recreation cemetery is technically not part of it but is certainly one that they've talked about and the only reason why it's not part of it is because it's a separately elected board with a separate staff and so they haven't technically fall, fallen under our umbrella yet but that's that's a little bit of where the community services um it is tough we've got we could put um, and some communities do your, your city plans can, you can group your city plans, however you want. Uh, there's no statutory requirement. Some places would have, uh, facilities and services under the same chapter heading. Um, in our construct, we have utilities and facilities under the same umbrella. Mm. So we can always leave utilities where they are, water, sewer, and, um, and those services under one and then bring facilities. Um, so you could talk about the fire department and the fire services under the same, under the same piece, just a different way of looking at it. But is the conflict resolution a department of the city or? No, it's just a separate service. Community justice has some pieces, obviously being community justice, they have some pieces and they have a plan in the public safety plan, but the mediation piece is not really part of that. They they do that. They they do a number of things under that umbrella of community justice, but the the mediation piece is is available for anybody. Oh, okay, but those are city employees. The community justice. Yep, community okay. justice is city employees and and volunteers. Yeah, we are we are somewhat unique in Vermont. Um, in that our senior center are, is part of city government. They are employees of the city government and our CJC is also part of city government. Most other places would have them as a private nonprofit. When do you think the additional, the homelessness, conflict assistance, and child care goals and strategies will be available? I'm hoping I was starting to work on them this week. Oh, okay. So all the so, work is done for them. It's just a matter of... Uh, there's, there's work to do. I have, um, I have to meet with homelessness. You know, we're starting to work work through it. It takes a lot of massaging. Sometimes these things fall together quickly. Sometimes they are, you know, a, a hard slog to kind of get through and figure out exactly how to put things together. But then, I, then I'll have to meet with the Homelessness Task Force for that one. Uh, I'll meet with uh, Carol for the CJC piece. And then the final one was the... Um, uh, child care. So child care, I would have to, is going to be a combination of both. Uh, so I'll have the, it, it's both private and what we're doing. It's going to be, you know, um, you know, our, so the, the aspiration is being pretty general. Some of the strategy is going to be working with private and how do we get our, uh, help our private child care providers to succeed. And then another piece is going to be what we're doing with our own, city child care services and i'll have to work with arnie on that and getting some information on the private calls so 
So there's a child care office that's separate from the recreation department. It's it's in the rec. Ar- Arnie is the recreation director. He's also the licensed child mm-hmm. care provider. Mm-hmm. So um, we would just have a conversation with him on on those services and what are his goals um, in expanding that. I know the goal is to expand the child care services. Yeah, I was wondering if if the child care should be folded into the recreation so it's clear, but I guess if you have private partners. Yeah, if you have private partners maybe that's I don't I don't know what the city does for the privately owned child care or maybe plans to do, but Yeah, and I don't know we we don't do a lot um and it's it's going to be difficult to try to figure out what we're going to do to try to incentivize and have, you know, what more can we do to help make them succeed? I mean, we can look at what are the zoning regulations. We have any regulatory burdens, but for the most part, we, we don't, or at least I don't think so. It'd be interesting to hear from the child care providers to see if it is because we try in our zoning to default when there is another um, oversighting and regulatory body. So in child care, if you want to be a licensed or registered child care provider, you have a lot of oversight through the state. So we try not to put a lot of oversight at our level. If you have your state license, we assume that you have you you meet um, the necessary requirements, um, and we won't add additional requirements to that. Uh, so those uh, the last one may take a little bit more work, but I think homelessness is the one that has the most work so far done on it. Um, mm-hmm. So I would hope within the next. Um, month. I know we're in March. So we were in talking with <clears throat> SE group, the only pieces that are left with it. So these are the implementation strategies. We have these last three pieces uh, of community services. And we have I'm trying to think what's the other one. And Maybe it's just this in land use. What is my, let's go back one here. It's all hiding under my tab here. Let's move this under so I can go back to here. Go back one. I think here I have have a banner that gets in my way. No, it's not on this drive. Okay. Um, so I, I have a table that goes through and looks at all of them. Uh, land use, natural resources, transportation, those are all done. Arts, community services, economic, energy, governance, we're not doing historic housing implementation, land use we have to do, natural resources, public and community, public safety, transportation, utilities and facilities. Yeah, I think this, from uh, the implementation strategies, this is it. The half of these, and then we're, we only have land use left. So I don't have a lot of those left. And then writing chapter pieces, I have two left, community services and public safety. So all the other ones are done and um, and they're working on them. And SE Group has them and they're working on them. So should we go through these um, by sector as opposed to maybe if I go through any of the Arcs aspiration goals and strategies, and then recreation, senior center, and, and cemetery. We just focus on one bit of time. Yeah. The different pages. Yeah, there's some. I know. Arcs, we went through the aspiration the goals. Yeah, I think these probably the strategies. Yeah, I think you went through those once already. 
we can do another quick run through and review them if you want. Yeah, I don't know if we if anyone has any thoughts or comments, or if we just want to look at the the high level strategies to ensure we're. Well, I think Ariane is bringing up uh, goal number three. So get down to the goals in terms of increasing the number of regional and national visitors. Through the month. Yeah. Is that the purpose of the parks department? Right. I think it's definitely like a city purpose. Is that I think that's what you're kind of yeah at. yeah, and I I I think we did talk about parks. I think in the economic development. So, but I, I don't know. It's not. Um, yeah, it just struck. Well, yeah, it uses the word coordinated. So maybe it's just there's going to be many parties working together. I think at the yeah. time there was a new herbs commissioner. I think come on. I mean, we were looking at this. He was thinking a lot about this as like an economic development strategy. Yeah, yeah Alec. My failure into like a destination. Yeah, Alec was trying to do do that, and part of what the parks commission and the parks department was trying to do was to work. There had been. There had been some work previously to try to go and connect us regionally, but a lot of the stuff within the parks department was Hubbard Park and um, doing things internally, having the trails, um, maintaining what we have, putting in new bike trails, um, you know, the Mamba bike trails and everything in uh, North, uh, North Branch. And some of what Alex's goals were trying to do is to expand so that way we would connect our our cross country ski trails to East Montpelier and to Middlesex and um, connect us out using some of our uh, potential trails out in Berlin. And then to also work on marketing and advertising. So that way, not only is it the stuff that's in the parks, but connect the parks piece to um, say the bike, bike lanes in the city. So that way we've got, all of these bike networks connected, whether they're on the roads or whether they're going through our um, park land, that they kind of all connect to make an economic um, economic sector out of outdoor recreation. And that was his goal, and that's what he's been working on, and that's why they now have a path going out. They're con currently, I believe, working on a path to go across to U32 to connect mm -hmm across there and so that's where a number of these are going um, I, feel like I, I like the way that you just said it but i don't think that's what is reflected in like the way that they have phrased it i mean they're, they're saying increase the number of regional and national visitors to montpelier <clears throat> you know like i think increase the connectivity of trails and bike paths <laughs> to other Towns, it sounds great because it benefits everybody. That's so it's not what they're saying. That's outlined in the strategies of economic development chapter. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I think that makes sense for economic development. I don't know that it makes sense that like the park should be looking to increase the number of regional visitors as a, a major goal. No, I'm saying, are you agreeing with the way that Mike just oh, articulated? I think so. Yeah, like when Mike said it, I was like, yeah, yeah exactly. Ah, I see. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just. But I think this is just like an odd way for the parks to have to framing it. I think it underscores maybe also a bit of tension in the, some of the discussion we had on, I don't think there was universal like exception of, the, the, not everyone was on board with the idea that that this would be like incorporating like a bunch of people coming to use our parks facilities. And mm -hmm. yes, you know, maybe they'll visit our restaurants, et cetera, but how many hamburgers do they need to eat for the payoff for our using those facilities or do we just end up with our property taxes you know right. subsidizing like revenue generation. trails for people coming out of town and not uh, advocating one way or another but mm -hmm. that was a, a bit of the discussion i think that, that happened i don't think it, it could just be 
rephrase. Mike, are you, um, you kind of I can like I can do this on the fly or I can just take some notes. Okay. I don't know if we want to try to wordsmith on the fly or just throw down some notes. Um, but I can, you know, go with goal number three. Um, just to focus on regional connectivity. What well, what you said was kind of like improving all of the bike paths and cross country trails, which I think most people who live in town would agree with. I don't know that the, the park's goal of just increasing the number of visitors to Montpelier is like a park's. Yeah, usually we haven't for most other goals. Uh, and this came up with a lot of, of, of putting the benchmark or the metric in it. And this one is one of the few that kind of ended up with the benchmark in it. You know, how would you measure if we were doing a, <clears throat> doing a good job with, you know, making outdoor recreation, you know, a, a key part of our economic development plan. One way we could do that is by measuring the number of people visiting. But I don't know as yeah, I think I agree with John. I think it's whether that makes sense as a as the the goal. You know, that's that's a question. Mm -hmm. But let me see a little bit of what we did for strategies. I mean it is around marked as a low priority. I'm not saying that. <laughs> Where's the I just see like a little arrow of on right. strategies. I mean, I'm not saying that green print. means we don't reword it. Oh, in the strategy saying, section. Oh, yeah. It's at a low priority. Okay. Which one is that? That's on, it's like, well, there is like a priority. Oh, it's the it. next tab over from goals and mineral objectives. So the strategy mm -hmm. section, and then it's five. So, I, yeah, I can, I can try to adjust that to, to focus on improving regional connectivity and connection to transportation network or even just like improving coordination with other regional parks it seems like there's a coordination with local and regional partners to yeah. uh, develop improve and expand you know, outdoor recreational assets yeah something like that and I guess the I guess John brings up a good point. I'm not quite sure we're settled on what the ultimate goal of this development is. Uh, I mean, are we just are we just improving and expanding those assets for the sake of doing so, or you know, is it for to encourage you know local residents and regional folks to utilize the the trail network or are we going to actively market this as a destination? I mean, I think that probably has some impact. On how uh, and I think that. some of that, some of that, as you pointed out, is in the economic development plan. Yeah, I think. So I think the marketing of that is in the economic development plan. We, we may or may not need that repeated here in the. Yeah. In the more of the parks. Um, side. I'm just looking to see what we've got. Yeah. The, the economic development template says uh, we will work with regional municipalities and entities to increase access to East Montpelier Trails, Wrightsville Reservoir, the Cross Vermont Trail, Berlin Pond, Irish Hill, Berlin Town Forest, Northfield Town Forest, and nearby state forests. We will work with VC, v, uh, CVRPC, the Department of Forest, Parks, Recreation, Vermont Outdoor Business Alliance, Central Vermont Chamber of Commerce, and Economic Development Corporation, Berry City, Berry Town, and others. And that is the goal is to expand and promote outdoor recreation opportunities. Um, we'll work with multiple partners to expand trail mileage and coordinate tourism marketing. So, um, yeah, it looks like most of those are actually doing a better job of, as you point out, you know, having a goal of improving coordination with regional partners to improve regional recreational assets. Yeah, something to that effect, rather than promoting, you know, the, the marketing, the tourism marketing. Yeah. 
Yeah, because the goals over in N, there's uh, A3. These are all the, all the goals of A3 are kind of, you know, the green print plan. That's basically help. That's their network plan. Um, the green print conservation program, which is about, that's related to the green print plan. Green print is the plan. The conservation program is how we purchase those properties that are needed to get purchased. So don't say, hey, we need a, a trail that goes across here. But um, actually purchasing the rights to build that trail is part of the conservation program. So that's why that's also part of that building that network. Um, the management plan, how we take care of our, you know, maintain them going forward. Um, Aaron just talked about the outreach program. Then we got to go all the way down to outdoor recreation, economic development coordination program. So that, that would be the only one that kind of goes out back to the actual economic development. Then the other one is just the regional pl recreation plan and a new multi-use trail study. So the only thing that's kind of left out is this economic development coordination. Yeah, that's a little bit of an internal working on those type of opportunities, which, again, either that could be repeated um, or moved to, we could just take that and move that to the economic development plan if it's not there already. Yeah, that makes sense. Maybe moving number eight. That tracks me closely with the economic development. Strategy Definitely. eight, move to economic development. So just touching quickly on what the other two goals were. Um, increasing the number of playgrounds, natural areas, trails, greenways, consistent with the green print. Um, and ensuring our park system offers four season recreational opportunities. I think that's a pretty basic, straightforward goal of your parks department is to provide these. Um, and we're having a goal of increasing them, which is true. They're trying to build out. We've always been for a long time, Hubbard park. And, um, we had a number of many smaller parks that kind of scattered around Blanchard park. Um, but. They want to increase them, especially trails, and that's been the big push lately. Uh, and then number two is to improve the community's appreciation and understanding of the park resources, rules, policies, in order to understand the integrity, safety, and sustainability of the park system for current and future generations. So there's a lot of what they do that's about education and working with the public in that arena. Um, so that comes up a lot with uh, our popular, how do we handle dogs in the park? <laughs> so that, that keeps city council at least once or twice a year going. So that's where, that's where all the, the goals then come in is, um, the green print plan, which we talked about in the conservation program, parks management, these top address a number of those pieces, the communication and outreach, um, Parks also has a very active volunteer program, um, including working a lot with youth. And that goes a lot to um, the first goal of having a good park system because the volunteers do a lot of the work to keep the park system up. And it also goes to instilling appreciation. Um, you know, uh, as the youth work in the parks, they, they come to appreciate the park system and all the work it takes to take care of it. And as they grow and they stay here, um, they become, you know, future folks that will support the system. Uh, we have a couple of policies. The 10 minute walk is a key policy that they want to have in the 15 minute walk to a natural area. So we still have to do a little bit of mapping to determine, you know, how, how are we doing, but they want to be able to look at every neighborhood. And this also helps to direct city council and has been mentioned many times with city council. Um, with respect to especially south of the um, Winooski River, um, 
that area doesn't have very many parks. And so that has always been a big issue of, um, you know, if we're going to have a policy of a 10 minute walk to a park, that could be a small park that could be, um, you know, you could think about over in Isabel circle, there's a small park. Um, so that area over there is within a 10 minute walk to a park but they're not within a 15 minute walk to a natural area. And that is their other goal. So that's more um, getting, getting to places where there might be some trails and some um, forested natural areas, as opposed to say a park that is um, in urban park or just um, swing sets and, and recreation equipment. It's like a bit of a weird balance. making sure that we live close to places where we can't necessarily go. Or like... I, I agree. The word, the wording does come out a little strange of uh, large protected areas. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have some zoning requirements. So that's why we touch on zoning a little bit. Um, we just talked about the economic coordination and then uh, the couple of plan studies that they wanted to do over the next eight years. So this is an eight year plan. Um, a lot of these, you'll note that there's some of them, uh, column D is talking about the cost, column E is talking about the priority. So you see a number of these uh, kind of are in the lower priority. Their higher priorities are at the top. Um, or is it the other way around? What do you got? Priority is in D, cost is in E. So reverse those. So the policies, those are high priorities, low cost. Yep. It uses the term private connections, but in my head, it's public connections. Like, isn't it a way for the public to get through to a park? So that is a, due to constitutional uh, issues, we can't use zoning regulations to allow public access onto private property. So we can go through and have a requirement that um, a new project comes in, let's say it's a, um, a multifamily housing development. We can have a requirement that says, well, if you're abutting the trail, you've got to make connections to that trail for the people that live there. We can't because of some court decisions, Supreme Court decisions in 2017 or 2018 say make those also available to the public to use to walk through private property. Uh, so we just can't we just can't use zoning to allow public access to private property. We do. It would be a, it would be considered a, a taking. We could interested in paying for it. We could purchase it. We certainly have the right to purchase it. We just can't use zoning as a tool. And we have. Oh, I see. So we have, uh, you know, I'll give a, a good example. There's a conversation right now going on with um, Isabel Circle because they are going to develop a part of their property and then they have a part of their property that they're thinking of donating potentially to the city for a park. We can't talk about the park piece at all in the discussion of that because we can't have there to be a, this appearance of a conflict that, mm -hmm. that there's some quid pro quo between issuing the permit and and the donation of land, because if there is, then it can cause an issue down the road. So we, um, the DRB will talk about the development piece. And if they want to donate land, they talk to city council. And we try to keep those as separate as we can. But we require it for cars, like roads. Yes. Uh, well, they've got, if it would be a private street until it's a public street, when it's a public street, then yeah. And we can't require somebody to have public parking, probably. We would require them to have a public road. If they, if we required them to build a public road, otherwise we require them to build a private road. So, yes. But I get where you're going. I'm just bitter that we have all these rules <laughs> that we're like, oh, it's a car. You can't walk on it. Of course, it, we can, can drive that. on it. But if it's a trail for a human, we can't acquire that. That's absurd. Yeah. So, serve the public good? Yes. So we do try to work. Um, and there are a number of places we can go through 
and, and have these types of conversations, um, other tools we could go through. If, if somebody came in with a project and said, hey, I would like a tax stabilization, we could certainly go through and require public access in exchange for that. Because, because now there's a cash benefit being transferred, we could go through and say, yeah, we'll do that as long as you donate to the city the right of way. So there are a lot of places we can have that conversation. We just can't have that conversation as it applies to, to administrative permits like zoning. And we could have an official map. And we could have an official map that would, and we have encouraged um, the Parks Commission to work with us on the development of an official map um, that would give us the right of first refusal in, in buying those rights away that we need. So if we, you know, they have laid out where they would like some paths to go. Um, and because they cross a whole bunch of private property, it becomes very difficult to go through and connect all those pieces because once you've bought four of the five pieces you need, if that fifth person never comes along, you, you've spent a lot of money on a path to nowhere. Um, so there's, you can do an official map, which would then give you the, the opportunity to then go through and either use eminent domain or to have a right of first refusal to be able to go through and say, this is, this is what we're going to do. And we're going to cut you a check and we're just going to make this part of the city. Yeah, I think at some point we may end up in in our parks strategies, there may eventually be one that talks about an official map. Um, but they haven't quite gotten there yet. Um, and I think we'll we will get there eventually for with them. We kind of okay with the parks piece, and we can certainly take comments at any time on these. So these, yeah, as we mentioned before, and for anyone in the public who's watching on Orca, that these are all these are all drafts, and there is nothing that is being approved as permanent and done. These will be drafts that we'll put together and compile, and if we've got changes to make, we can make them before we go public. And once we go public, then there's public comment and we can vote on making changes anytime up to city council. And then at that point they get handed to city council and people can make changes anytime up until they adopt them. So whether it's simple wordsmithing or whether it's recommendations to completely remove a recommendation or add a new recommendation. Oh, I just want to just so who would adopt the policy about the 10 minute walk? Would that be the parks commission or the city council? Uh, these are what we're trying to do. Um, and we talked more about this with the previous uh, assistant city manager. And we kind of want to do the same thing now um, and haven't worked as much um, to go through and see how we wanted to do these, but these would be adopted by city council. And the, and the goal is that you can change policies whenever you want um, for city council. They can just simply put it on an agenda item and change the policy. It's not changing an ordinance. Policies are things that say how we use our resources, we as government, so I say we because I'm in government. So how do we as our government use our resources, roads, parking lots, parks? Uh, how do we spend our money? How do we... Um, um, behave. It's basically how, how we are using our things. That's what we're defining as a policy. So in this case, the policy is that um, city council would adopt a policy for 10 minute walk to a park. And it would be, you know, one of these, whereas resolutions that would go through and say, this is going to be our policy. And we're going to move forward on trying to, to identify those areas that don't meet this requirement and then to identify land and resources to, um, basically fill in the fill in the holes where don't we have a 10 minute walk um and it probably would be a pretty quick gis map if we could define what it is a park is that's probably pretty easy but the 15 minute walk to a natural area we'd have to define what's the difference between a park and a natural area 
um, is a natural area automatically a park or are these two separate classes? We just have to figure out how to define it and then draw a couple of, you know, what, what is a 10 minute walk is that a thousand feet is that 1500 feet set of thing. And then we can go through and see how much of the city is actually covered. Um, it'd probably be a pretty short, pretty quick exercise of just defining a few things and making a few measurements, but certainly what we would find is south of, um, south of the river, it's going to be probably, you'll find big gaps of where there isn't parkland. Um, think about Freedom Drive and um, those areas are pretty far from any of our city-owned parkland. I mean, they certainly have opportunities there. There's there's rural lands that people take advantage of, but they aren't officially recognized parklands that people can um, legally take advantage of. So um, the 15 minute walk to a natural area, you're going to probably find some places, um, over by country club road. We now own it. So maybe we've got a couple of those check boxes, but before we had purchased country club road, you can think about that area over by Gallison Hill. How far would you have to go to get to a natural area from Gallison Hill? Probably pretty far. Um, so those are going to be probably, um, as you get closer to the core, Obviously, it's there's a lot more parks and a lot more natural areas. Does it make sense to have a 15-minute walk policy for areas that are pretty rural? Oh. It, I, I feel like it's just like encouraging <laughs> sprawl and expansion when they already sprawling, have woods. Sprawling parkland. Well, they have woods in their backyards to... if you're out. I mean... Probably. Yeah. yeah i mean i grew up in like suburban philadelphia where i was not within a 15 minute walk of a natural area but i could see how that would be nice because we lived in like a small home but if you live on like an acre of land it's probably 15 minutes just to get off your land and then you there's probably like a forest parts. nearby you got a big property. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it just kind of like does it make sense to limit the policy to a certain perimeter? Yeah, you know, I, I, people I, really benefit from being close to nature, you know, because they don't have big backyards. And, and I thought about how I would measure this because we've got we've broken the city into about fifty neighborhoods, and as you get to like the Wrightsville neighborhood, is this massive, you know, and if if we were measuring it from neighborhoods, then you know a ten minute or 15 minute walk from the edge of that neighborhood would get you quite a ways. But it, I mean, it would take you more than 15 minutes to walk across the Wrightsville. Probably take you half an hour to walk across the Wrightsville neighborhood because it's so big, but it's also very rural. And it's also, you know, it's, that's the Northern part right up by Wrightsville it comes down that, that neighborhood comes down as far as um, the stump dump and I think Gould Hill. So think about walking from Wrightsville to Gould Hills, all one neighborhood. What is the purpose of the natural area policy, the 15 minute, you know, is I would think that in, within a city, the purpose of parks is to give people access to nature that they otherwise wouldn't get. If you're already living somewhere that's pretty rural, like what is the purpose of having a, a natural area within 15 minutes of your house? And I think we would have to take that question up with the parks. That is their, the, these are not policies I came up with. These are policies they have. So, okay. yeah. So I, at, at a point, I, I, I can certainly see. Using whoever, you know, the, the thought process behind this and whether limiting it a bit would make more sense. Yeah. And I've, I've questioned, I mean, there's the walk, there's um, the question of whether or not, you know, um, 15 minute, well, I mean, one's a 10 minute walk, one's a 15 minute walk. That's really not that big of a difference in distance. You know, I was thinking, you know, would the natural area, a 15 minute bike ride to a natural area would kind of change that. I, I, I don't know personally. I think some of these, I think we would have just have to have a more in-depth conversation with them about what they're trying to get at, because I, I agree. Part of the reason we have a lot of parks in general is because the, the more densely you live, you know, you know, uh, you, you live in, you know, 
um, down where John is and probably where a lot of you are, you, know, you don't really have a yard almost big enough to, to chuck around a Frisbee or, or play fetch with the dog. You kind of, you, you've got your place. And um, if you want to have those opportunities, part of the agreement, you know, the social contract is we're all going to live close together. And then we're going to share those recreational resources. And that's what the parks department is there for to give you those um, opportunities to, to go out and enjoy and not have to mow your giant lawn like I do. So, um, but why would you then need to go and have the 15 minute walk? If you're also living out in a place where you've got eight acres, you know, or 10 acres, um, the value of that social contract kind of falls apart because you've got your eight acres. You don't really need to go and have a shared resource that goes along with it. So, and maybe, maybe that part of that has to go into the policy of drawing that line. This policy really applies for anyone who lives within the densely populated areas, which would be anything probably from res nine, residential 9,000, which is four units an acre down to the urban core. But I think that would be something we would have to take up with the parks commission because it is their, that's their policy that they're, they want to push for. I think it, I mean, we could consider removing both of these given that we're endorsing the green print plan. Like Montpelier is not this mysterious amorphous place where we're like, we need to come up with this blanket policy and then look and try to figure out what that means afterwards. Like it's a small city. We can, can look and see where it makes sense to have these amenities. And some of it is just more nuanced on, in my mind, like having access to a nice high quality trail doesn't need to be like a large area that could connect, connect you to one. But this, in some ways there, you can imagine coming up as a used as a club when there is a development proposed in a rural area where someone says, Hey, your policy is to have a large natural area and I don't have one. This development shouldn't happen. It should be a park. Doesn't the strategy explicitly <laughs> we we kind of had to insert that in. I was like, <laughs> it's like we we've got to make sure we insert that in, but uh agreed. And I, I I see what John is, is saying and I agree I agree with him. These two policies really should be a part of this original green print, which is saying, and it actually is, there it is. Um, this uh, revised plan is needed to one, ensure that the location of parks and natural areas exi exists to meet access objectives of 10 and 15 minute walks, which were the ones we just talked about. Yeah. I would favor just taking those two um, out because it further highlights it to me. Something that uh, I don't know could be strictly interpreted in a way that I don't know <laughs> I might not favor. And the city council would adopt it. Is that what? Because you're asking. Yeah. I, and they would be adopting that they they have adopted a green print and there's a conversation about revising that green print at this point but the green print would when you make a new green print plan um identify where parks should be and identify where trails should be um so it would be the parks the natural areas and the trails that connect them all that plan is the green print and so Basically, when they when the city council adopts the green print plan, a revised one, they will be adopting a green print plan that meets five and six. The green print plan currently reside. Uh, you can find it if you Google it on on our website. It is, is the, there. Is the parks department just use it? Generally? Yeah, it is a parks department plan. Okay. Yeah, it's got a plan. It's got a map that goes along with it, but it's more of a generalized map. It'll kind of have this. 500 foot wide yeah. connection that goes across and it'll say somewhere in here, we've got to put a path. We don't, we're not looking for a 500 foot wide path, but we can't very specifically draw a line through it because we don't know whether this property owner would be amenable. So sometimes it kind of goes through these property owners and then it cuts up and goes to yeah. these property owners because 
these guys were willing to participate. These guys, it's just a human migration trap. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, we've got a revised to goal, a revision to goal number three. We've moved strategy eight, if it's not already in economic development, and we've removed strategies five and six. So did that cover recreation as well or no? Uh, that covered parks. So recreation's uh, aspiration was for all Montpelier residents to have a greater quality of life, betterment of health, and improved community ties through quality recreational programs that are safe and affordable. Recreational programs will also provide opportunities for growth in tourism and foster economic development. And I think that little bit of the last sentence goes to some of the same, because the parks and recreation are kind of connected, interconnected. Um, so the goals. The uh, goals six and seven are more, seven in particular is more of a strategy than that goal. Yeah, well, we can see when we get there what they what they had for specific strategies tied to that. That right now they're only including they're only making it inclusive of ages and not genders and other, um, you know, traits. As a parent of a daughter <laughs> who uses the recreation department, I think. You know, it's not just it's not just a matter of being age inclusive. We just we just cross out ages. ages for all. Yeah. Sound good? Just rem remove the word. Once you start listing, then oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I agree, and I think Arnie would agree as well. Uh, I think when that was put together, and I'm sure he would agree. And so they do focus a lot on four and five, really uh, does break out a lot of what they try to do. Um, you know, it's about opportunities, and it's also about making sure those opportunities are affordable mm -hmm. um, to everybody. And then the number six is um, about strength, strengthening ties. So a lot of what he said, uh, a lot of what he, you know, they do recreation programs, as I said, for, for health and for um, bringing people together for the community ties. What if we, this feels like maybe it's just getting into wordsmithing, but if we just add strength and community ties to number four. So have a greater quality of life, improve, maintain health and strengthen community ties. And then we drop six and seven because they're more, they're, they could be like sponsoring those community activities as a strategy to meet those other goals. And so is managing and improving our rec fields. Just don't want tourists using really what you're saying. <laughs> well, I mean, it's kind of interesting if, there, if there's like this plan to use the the Elks Club property, for like all these nice, you know, to add all these nice facilities and then make it free for tourists just to show up and use them. I don't think they would expect them to be free. <laughs> All 
All right. Well, let's see. We'll see what num- comes up as um, six and seven in the strategies. And then if we see that none of the strategies survive, then we can certainly get rid of, or if, or if it relates to con- strengthening community ties, we can always move it to four. We'll see what the strategies hold. So the strategies, we've got the recreation program. Um, yeah, we can be the B4, B6, probably the B6 part is the um, about strengthening community ties. Communication program. B study, that's about affordability. Uh, recreation events and tourism. So we're really down here at um, and I can go back and look at the community facilities because the capital improvement plan this this may be tied to tied into um, maintaining facilities. But as I said, we have this utilities and facilities chapter, and we've got community services, and sometimes they connect the services and the facilities into the same, and sometimes they, in our case, we've got them in different buckets. So this may be something more appropriate to the maintenance of the facilities in the CIP, so that number 15 may go. But recreation events and tourism program is um, really the tourism is tied mostly to the mountaineers. Um, I mean, most of the recreational events that we're talking about are things that are mostly here for for the residents, the the annual egg hunt, which is coming up, by the way, Um, the parent-child dance, uh, the ski and skate skate swap. These are all things that aren't really for tourism. Not city run. Those attract. Yep. Out of town folks. Yeah. And the question I think is how much focus do we want our recreation department working on bringing people in from away or providing events for folks? Or is it a little bit of both? Twelve and eleven are kind of muddied because number twelve is talking about communications, but then half of it is talking about the all of the new stuff that will be happening at the Country Club Road project. Um, it seems like that's actually part of the recreation program. And there's nothing really expanding about communication. They just want to keep doing what they're doing. It seems like half of number 12 should be put into number 11. Yeah, a little bit of that could be cleaned up. increasing opportunity for recreation for all. I'm not seeing anything about actually <laughs> increasing opportunities for all. Um, it identifies youth sports specifically. Are there any, is there, do the senior center and recreation department overlap? Yeah, they're all part of the same department. So there is, there are things, I mean, a lot of pickleball is uh, all ages, including seniors, same with tennis. Um, I don't know if there are separate basketball leagues 
I, I, I know I see a lot of folks going into the recreation center on Barry Street of all ages. So I don't know if it's different, if there are different leagues or if it's just mixed leagues that are there. Um, there, yeah. Yeah, it's in there in the senior or in the uh, recreation facility on Barry Street. They also have the out their lines are painted on uh, the uh, tennis courts in the rec field as well as in the at the high school. Parking spaces, so I think there's a pickleball court in front of everybody's home that was built after we adapted zone. That's small. Just just takes a small, small net. You're ready to go. Yeah, there's quite a, quite a few pickleball opportunities out there. Um, but yeah, I would probably say there's probably a lot more youth sports than there are adult sports out there. So well stated. And then the strategies just seems like a traditional old school recreation facility. You know, um, like what are you actually doing to provide opportunities for everyone in our community? Caroline. But that's still sports, right? I mean, does, yes. does recreation always have to do with sports? Right. Chess clubs. Chess clubs, exactly. A debate club, that would go well in this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know the senior center has a lot of programs as well. They, um, But they're, of course, focused on just their group, so... They really do have great programs. <laughs> I want to take the classes. <laughs> yeah, so I can't remember what the, so we're on strategies now, right? And how it correlates to the goal, but I agree. You're rereading that. It doesn't really. Yeah, the first one was talking, the first goal was talking about, you know, increasing the amount of opportunities for all. And the second one is talking about making sure it's affordable. So um, really most of what we're talking about is there. And then the, the last ones we're talking about um, tourism and economic development, if we wanted to keep that. Um, but most of what that would fall into is, is, you know, is pretty straightforward. It's a recreation program. Um, and in this case, they, they have their communication program as well, because they're want to make sure they're they're hearing from people about what opportunities things they can do we want to modernize this strategy. we just add and other modern things <laughs> <laughs> well they were tried sure they did for the kids i mean pump okay. tracks and you know pump tracks and climbing walls and disc golf is kind of in there but um whether we captured enough yeah but it, for I, all ages i feel like strategies more about how they're gonna do out ideas for outreach and different you know do they have any other well <laughs> i reached my step goal by moving my arm um <laughs> Uh, outreach and also any other like ideas for new revenue or how are they going to make things more affordable? So yeah, it would just be helpful. Sorry, I'm not using the microphone. I just realized, but. Let's see if number 17 is also in our utilities and facilities chapter.
I mean, there's certainly a connection between the two. Having the facilities to provide the recreational opportunities and providing recreational opportunities are certainly closely connected, but so we've got two, two big recreation questions that are out there right now that the department is looking at. One is what do we do at Barry street because of all of its environmental issues. And the second thing is country club road, which was purchased with a million dollars of recreation dollars in order to be a new location for a recreation center. And that process is ongoing to determine whether or not the so much, Number 16 will probably go away before we get to adopt this plan. It'll take us, you know, nine months to a year to adopt this plan. And by the time we get there, that will already be done. Uh, it'll probably be country club road implementation. So the question is, what do we need to do and where does it have to go? You know, is it a, is it a tennis court? Is it a basketball court? Is it a swimming pool? Is it, all of the above, is it none of the above? That's what's being decided right now. Staying back to your thing about the recreation program and monitoring um, re regularly reviewed for changes in the community preference. How, how, how did the skate park come, come about? Was that people showing up at the Parks Commission saying we want a skate park? Or, I mean, you know what I mean? There was a mechanism for them to for the new skate park. Yeah. I mean, just saying like what some people showed up and said, we've, we, right, we'd mean, love to fundraise some I money mean, to put in the skate park. Are you saying yeah. like they should spitball more about what they could do to expand activities within the rec department, but it, it sounds like most of it came from like pickleball took off and they said, Oh, we need to do more pickleball. So they, maybe it should say they're being responsive to changes that happen in the community. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the, I don't know if they know what the future trend is. I couldn't tell you pickleball is going to be crazy. You yeah. can't find a court no. without pickleball. Yeah, and they, I I know uh, they're talking about in, at Country Club Road, it, you know, the, the indoor basketball, but they also wanted to have an indoor track because they wanted to have it for more for indoor walking track than anything else. Um, so that way there's possible things for um, seniors and others to be able to go out and use that as a resource. Um, I, I know when people have talked about swimming pools, I, I, when we studied them, they've all shown that they're not financially viable, but we'll, we let the process, um, be the process and the council will decide, but swimming pools also come up a lot for all ages. Swimming pools are not just kids. They're not just seniors. They're, you know, they're swimming is, uh, available for everybody. Um, so I think they certainly are looking at those. And they certainly take into account when they when they think all ages, they are all they are also looking at not just children as a uniform group, but everyone from you know, making sure we've got the child safe playgrounds for the youngest right up to, you know, your elementary school and your high schools and right up through so that way everybody's got opportunities. But yes, we should have opportunities that continue beyond the kids right up through to the seniors and then available opportunities for seniors as well. I know the community justice provisions are on the agenda, but I'm not sure we'll have time to get to them. I also think Kirby, at the last time we discussed them, maybe had the most to, mm -hmm. to say about that. So do we, are we okay pushing that to the next, next meeting? I had notes for making changes to for recreation, the changes to goals four and six. Then we talked um, strategies 15 and 17 or whether just check whether or not they're in the facilities plan. They may have been put in here. We developed this plan before I did the utilities and facilities. So those could probably be moved over there if they're already there. Clean up 11 and 12. That was fit with the communication that we talked about. Um, where 11 is talking about uh, the recreation programs, 12 is talking about the communication programs. There seems to be a little bit of 
intermixing there. We'll clean that up. Um, and then we just have an out overall outstanding question of, are we doing enough in number 11 for all ages? Um, and I, we may just be able to, it may just need to have some wording changed in there to go and ensure that we're talking about, for example, these types of things. Um, it says for adults and youth, including all of these, but. I wanted to make to the goal. It's not just age inclusivity that we need to talk about. You know, I think there's other elements in society uh, that we need to address at the recreation department. Okay. So again, yeah, I think so they're definitely focused about... on that. Like they do have programs for adults, many different ages, <laughs> you know, do they have equal opportunities for everyone other than just based on age? Yep. No, I agree. So maybe, maybe what we need to look at is including facilities and programs. We say for adult and youth sports, but maybe we can just remove, remove that. Uh, libraries would be library. Uh, I'm trying to remember if that is tucked under facilities. Yeah. Cause you've got some things get really muddy. You got facilities and services and the library and hospitals have to be discussed, uh, healthcare. Um, and those are just talked about as facilities. This is where the library is. This is where the hospitals are. your center and cemetery yes they did have quite a few okay oh, that's i mean strategies so the goals and for those of you who are somewhat new here john has we, we've always broken these into big long lists or my processes i'll break them into you know separate goal for safe housing and different goal for affordable housing and i'll break them into two pieces because they're treated differently and so we end up with a lot of goals and then strategies and john likes to compress them back into smaller groups that make logical sense so that way we don't have this redundancy um it's just a matter of style there's no right or wrong kind of talking. <laughs> <laughs> i'm just explaining I can let John, I can let John say it too, but that's what John has done. In I would like one goal for one thing. goal for everything. That's it. <laughs> so. Services. <laughs> Do your job. <laughs> Maintain services so a lot of these um in in as we are looking at the goals um so a lot of these are also a self-reflection as they're looking through so every goal is looking at whether you're trying to trying to maintain evolve or transform so there is a format here there's a method to the madness and so as the the senior center director is looking through these things she's also reflecting on we can group things together that we want to maintain, um, but it starts becoming harder to have one that you want to maintain and group it with one that is something we want to improve. Um, so uh, she's, you know, believes they're doing a good job. So we want to maintain our role of MSAC as an advocate for and resource for the aging community in Montpelier. Um, and by the way, uh, it is the aging community 
is not senior, even though we are technically are the senior center. They actually are disappointed that seniors in the title, they prefer to be aging community or for the aging. Is the Montpelier Food Bank under the senior center or? I know they do Meals on Wheels. Oh, okay. And they are part of the Feast Farm. So the Feast Farm is on the Home Farm Way and is run by the Parks Department. And then they take the food that is oh. there and then they use it on Meals on Wheels. So does all the Feast Farm Meals on Wheels? I think it does because they're not legally allowed to sell it because they there's some oh. weird, quirky... But it doesn't go to anybody else. It goes to Mills. Right? Yeah, I think it just goes to them. So, yes, it's, they, they do Meals on Wheels. They also do a number of other meals programs. So they'll have dinners and different things there. Distinction is between 11 and 13. Oh, interesting. Yeah, those do actually look very much alike. So that would be 11, C11, and C13. Just flip over to strategies and see if there's a big difference between those. C11 is a health and wellness program. And it may be that I have a word wrong. That's about health and wellness, offering movement classes, nutrition, wellness classes. And 13 is about personal independence services to help people remain independent and age in place. That's the only strategy for each one of those. One's about health and one's about independence. It's important for healthy aging, especially those living at home, and maintain support for aging population to allow independence. I think the subtle difference there is that they're related in that certainly there is the, the healthy one is their health programs and one is their independence programs. Not everybody is trying to age in place at home. Okay. But I see the, how similar they are. So My, number 11 is really about, classes to encourage like healthy yeah okay. yep is there a way to well as that to make it less yeah for all, for all of these, the exception maybe improving the financial security um through the funding sources like i think i would have a hard time at the end of whatever our planning period is saying like yes or no this has been accomplished Like they don't seem like actual goals. Yeah, mean? like did we support mm -hmm. the aging population to allow independence? Like in eight years from now, mm -hmm. are we going to be able to say like that we did or didn't do that? Might not if we don't have a benchmark that eventually goes along with it, but it justifies why we have sometimes the question is why do we have a program it's like well we have that program because it supports our goal um to support an aging population and if the city council or whoever doesn't support that goal then it doesn't make sense to have the corresponding um and now while i'm thinking about it i'll just mention it um Part of this is they want to go through and get certified or accredited, I guess is the word. They want to get accredited. And in the accreditation, there are six lines, uh, six things you've got to do. And so these, some of these correspond to those six targets. So it's kind of like um, when we talked about the 
police department, they have the six pillars. And so they have six goals where each goal lines up with one of the pillars. And I think there was some of this that was in here. We did combine some of them to actually think it was maybe nine or 10 requirements for accreditation. And some of them are close enough that I could combine them. What's the goal of like accredit uh, accreditation? Uh, it, Uh, I mean, it's just basically how you'd have for, you know, kind of like any accreditation or certification. It's not a, it's not a requirement, but it's just a demonstration. Um, you know, I, I guess I'm just thinking if we can articulate why we want that nation, maybe that gets to the underpinning of like goals or I'm not sure. Like if this, if the goal of having these is a credit accreditation, like why do we want that? So NCOA accreditation policy, achieve accreditation for the senior center through the National Council on Aging, through the completion of the nine standards of excellence for senior center operations. These include maintenance, maintaining a governance structure and creating effective relationships with partner staff, council, and the community. So that's getting accreditation is a policy of theirs. That's as much as I can, much information as I can provide on that one. of feedback. Yeah. Mike. Can we just collapse the maintain <laughs> ones at least into one goal? <laughs> um, yeah, they're working a bit backwards. They have the strategies in place. They have their programs in place and they're creating goals to match up with those strategies as opposed to the other way around. Yeah, developing these plans always works either backwards or forwards. In some cases, you write down what you do and then try to remember why you do them. In some cases, it's obvious. In other cases, you start at the top and work your way down. Um, but they do a lot, so that's that's part of their thing is they do have a lot of programs that target food they've got a bunch that target health they've got a bunch that target um uh you know independence and so they just try to capture all of their different different things because they've got you know a couple hundred programs a, a year of things that are going on from yoga to meals on wheels to foot care clinics to helping people with their taxes to um, they, they offer a lot of services. So it looks like the improvements, I mean, other than the governance one and nine, you know, it's, you know, the improving food security and they are trying to increase, they want to try to buy, uh, to, Part of if they move to Country Club Road, they want to get a bigger commercial kitchen, so they could increase the number. They they believe they could you know vastly increase the number of meals on wheels deliveries they could make. If they had a bigger kitchen, um, increasing socialization there, trying to definitely get more opportunities going there, and improving financial security of MSAC. That really. And nine is more about partners. And again, we can look at number 15. Let's 
to whether that is in if that's in the facilities plan. So that would take out one. Maintain aging region. But yeah, all in all under strategies, they're more just a lot of small bite sized pieces. Health and wellness, socialization, personal independence, the feast farm. They've avoided the like, have an education and communication program that will make people appreciate aging people. Uh, they do up in 19. There we go. MSAC communication and outreach program. Oh, they do have. Yeah. <laughs> They actually have people, they actually have people that, that do that. So unlike a lot of departments that say, we need to have a communication outreach program, they actually have a communication outreach person. So that's actually a key part of theirs. Clearing gaps of information for aging adults. It's kind of like a, it's really like ambitious. Like, I don't really know what that means, but it could mean like, which one? It's like taking on Fox News here. <laughs> which one are you looking at? At 19. The communication oh, outreach. Yeah, communication. Can serve as a clearinghouse of information for aging adults. Yeah, they have a lot of their own mailing lists and emailing lists. So if there's a anything going on with scammers and spammers and everything else, they try to get information out. I think any uh, strategy feedback or do we want yeah I had that that piece usually that's the last thing I'll do I'll go through the prior to prioritize prioritize them um, and fill those blocks in So it's just helpful to get a sense of what their priorities are and where they're situated. I think because so many of these are continuing programs, it's going to, most of them are going to be either highs or mediums because there's right. a lot of stuff that the question will be the fee study, those types of things, probably be lower priorities. Well, we can, at least we got through three of them, which is good. Um, we can do cemeteries. I think we you want, you want to get through cemeteries? We cemeteries. Just bust, just bust it out. Nail it down here. Yeah. All right. Cemeteries. Increased visibility cemetery for tourism. We're thinking of, I uh, think of Barry there, I think. Some, oh, for some the goal there? Cemetery uh, envy. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are trying to do a little bit. That is That is one of their things and they do they actually do they don't do as much certainly not doing as much as hope cemetery but they do do bus tours 
Oh, they do? Yep, they've done Who's some tours. There? Um <laughs> Pat the Patrick Cemetery director. He does bus tour? Pat yeah, Patrick Healy, yeah. Oh. yeah. I think there's a little more walking, a little less sitting in the bus, but we can mash it up with the rec strategy and have like the LARPers in there and they could somehow just. <laughs> oh, like bus tours stop by the cemetery. Okay. It's not like a whole event. Yeah. Okay. How many famous <laughs> people do you <laughs> <laughs> Stop. It must be stop. Okay. Yeah. It's the hover. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will say, just as an aside, my daughter and I, we often eat ice cream in the cemetery in the summertime. And it's, it's impressive. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of interesting uh, cemetery architecture going. That's in one of our cemeteries. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> she thought it was weird, but <laughs> it was a nice view. She she came around though yeah, and right. said yes. Yeah, <laughs> said yes. Yeah. yeah, a lot of the goals I think are pretty straightforward. Even if there, even if there are five of them, keep mowing, keep their strategies, keep mowing, keep burying. <laughs> like the environmental stewardship part of it, they want to create non moan arts, right? Which I think was controversial in Front Porch Forum last summer. Yep. Yeah, That's when right. we the get to this program get... is to not mow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah, the so they they you know the the strategies are pretty straightforward matching up with the with the goals. I mean but our we do have a very progressive our burial programs. We we do natural burials. We do a lot of things that other places don't allow. Um, so we're meeting a lot of the cultural and uh, personal wishes of people. And the same with the... So, sorry, I'm just again kind of curious. Is the Perpetual Care Fund, is that a fund that... Um, what is that? <laughs> so if you go back historically, cemeteries used to be kind of almost privately run and you would give a certain amount of money in order to be buried. And that would go into the perpetual care fund, which would pay for people to mow and take care of the, the cemeteries. And then they were frequently not funded well enough and they would end up kind of falling into disrepair and then automatically being defaulted by state law it defaults to the ownership of the municipality to take care of them. Now, I don't, I don't believe that's how the Green Mount Cemetery got to be under city ownership, but that is how a number of cemeteries and other communities end up falling into um, municipal care. But there is usually a perpetual care fund that that exists, and we have one as well. And so if you wanted to be buried at Green Mountain Cemetery, you'd have to pay a certain amount of money that would go into the perpetual care fund that is invested to generate revenues. So that way, those revenues are supposed to be used for the care of the perpetual care of the site. Um, we, I, I don't believe our perpetual care fund pays for everything i think it gets a lot of money from general fund as well to support it but there is a perpetual care fund and they are trying to increase the amount of money in it so that way it can continue to to grow and help to pay some of the costs so can, that green amount so their partnership program a lot of the currently a lot of the maintenance that is done is done with the northeast correctional complex um 
couple other groups that also partner with with them. Well, I think we actually ha they do a lot of outreach for these things here, but yes, that is true. We now have an outreach coordinator, so. There's like this this question, this reoccurring question on attracting visitors that I think in my mind we've not done a great job of understanding why we're doing that. Like does another instance here, if we're not you know, like collecting fee at the cemetery, we're just we really want people to come outside of Montpelier to come enjoy all of these. Municipal facilities that we've we've supported. It's one of those things you read, and it's like, yeah, that sounds nice. And then you're like, wait, why are we doing this? I think there's a in hopes that they spend money in the downtown while they're here. And... You don't. I I don't. I, I just, just I just assume they're. Some cases there's pretty good data of, of some some things. I mean, I don't think people are gonna come in just to visit the cemetery and leave. I mean, they're probably be coming in to do a number of things, including one of them being, you know, if you're an arts and culture person, then you know, visiting the various cemeteries in central Vermont would be something to go and do. Um, I know they've got numbers for things like if you bring bike riders in and, you know, they spend a certain amount of money. So, but I don't know. No data. I don't know the data on cross-country skiers. Cemetery tourism? Yeah, cemetery tourism. Mm -hmm. How much money does that usually bring to a community? Or, you know, if we built more cross-country ski trails, how much would that bring in in, in, in money spent at Under River Sports or these other places? I I don't have the numbers, but. You, I could try to report back at our next meeting. I might have some stuff for uh, we can get some mobility data because um, we do have cemetery info. It should be interesting. I think the bigger question will be how much do we know about, you know, how much are we getting? I mean, I'll think about you know, whether it's cross country skiing or during the summer, our mountain bike trails, how much, how many, and maybe that goes to one of the, the goals they had, which was to be able to start to quantify this, you know, how many, how many people are coming from other places to go and use our mountain bike trails. And the hope is if they are, we are, how much are we capturing? Are we able to capture any of that? Um, at Onion River Sports or any of our other, you know, hotels and motels and restaurants, how many people are coming in and doing things and then going shopping and eating here as well. Um, I think that would be helpful to know at some point. Um, or are we mostly just capturing regional, you know, our folks coming in from Berry City and Berry Town to use our bike paths and then going back home to eat and go shopping, you know. Before we adjourn. Is there a second to it's <laughs> motion? <laughs> All right. I, I do have a, oh, a correction. It's on comments from the chair. It says Mike hasn't talked to anyone at the state to find out how to work at work. <laughs> I don't know how to work at work yet. Yeah. Right. How to work it? Mike hasn't 
Habitat for Humanity. Like, oh, the neighborhood, oh, how this program works. Any other corrections or discussion? Thought I had seen one. Oh, it was neighbor. It's neighborhood development area. Which the one I had noticed. Instead of neighbor, not neighbor development area. It's neighborhood development area. All right, so we've got two corrections to the comments of the chair. Any other changes? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Um, opposed? Extensions? Minutes are approved. Who to adjourn? All second. All those in favor of adjourning. Aye. 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 We're adjourned.